because he has posted stuff on YouTube that are a little one-sided that don't ex- sort of show the whole he's, he's edited some video imagine being in a place of power and authority in government and believing that you have the right to have news stories removed and scrubbed from the internet because you personally don't agree with them. Well, that's exactly what you're hearing North Korea Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un tell me over the phone. Fu- oh wait, no, that's Lieutenant Randall with the Logan, Utah Police Department telling me that over the phone. Because he has posted stuff on YouTube that are a little one-sided, that don't ex- sort of show the whole, he's, he's edited some video. Today is day four of exposing the Logan Police Department, and today we find out where they actually got the idea to try to have news stories scrubbed from the internet when they don't agree with them. The word had gotten around through the department uh, from the sheriff's department that uh, if you feel that your image and likeness is being portrayed in violation of the YouTube privacy rules, because he has posted stuff on YouTube that are a little one-sided, that don't sort of show the whole, he's he's edited some video that you can call and ask YouTube to look at it to see if it it meets the YouTube's criteria. Um, So as you can see, from the beginning, this was never about officers being concerned about their private information, such as bank account numbers, social security numbers, and home addresses being put out on the internet because that never happened. Because Cache Valley Transparency never put anything about these officers on the internet that they didn't put up themselves, including their faces, names, ranks, even information about their careers. All of the pictures that Cache Valley used to identify specific officers came directly from the Logan Police Department Facebook page with images and names. What officers were upset about is a, quote, one-sided story. In other words, they didn't agree with the narrative. You see, Logan Police Department has never previously had a problem with media outlets posting stories about them, including their names and photographs, as long as the story painted them in a favorable light. And one might argue that, well, maybe this news outlet got the government's permission to use their names and photographs. Fair enough. That's what we call government-controlled media. Truly, free press would never ask government for permission to publish a story about them because he has posted stuff on YouTube that are a little one-sided, that don't sort of show the whole, he's he's edited some video, and so one of our officers did, and so it sort of just went like wildfire, and certainly I haven't asked for any of my videos to be taken down. I got nothing to hide. Um, However, I'm not, we don't have a policy, and we're not gonna tell our officers what they can and cannot do about a YouTube video. So Lieutenant Randall claims that the department has no specific policy preventing officers from using the force of the state to restrict free press. So they realize and recognize that you have a right to record them and that for them to try to stop you from doing so would be a violation of the right to free press. But at some point they have a disconnect and fail to realize that you also have a right to publish the video and story. And that for them to interfere with that is just as bad as if they were to snatch the camera out of your hands in the first place when they saw you on site. Okay, uh, so this came down from the sheriff's department. No, no, not, not from the sheriff's department. There was a sheriff's deputy who mentioned that this is what officers could do. Okay, and what's the name of that, that deputy? Verbal. I have no idea. Um, What sheriff's department was he with? Cache County. And when we know now that the idea to shut down free press in Logan, Utah, actually came from the Cache County Sheriff's Department, it explains what happened a few days ago, May 14th, 2022. After all the attention that was being given to Logan Police Department, Cache County Sheriff decided that they weren't getting the attention they deserved. And so they arrested Cache County Transparency on a public easement recording them. This happened this weekend, after the first three videos exposing Logan Police Department for violating free press were published. Cache County Sheriff's Department Sergeant Olson stole Cache Valley Transparency's phone. Therefore, we don't have his footage of the incident, only his story. He claims that he was recording the sheriff's deputies from the public easement on the side of the road. There was no sidewalk present. 
The alleged incident and investigation was taking place at a residence on private property, which Cash Valley never even attempted to enter. Cash Valley Transparency did notice that in the front passenger seat of one of the sheriff's vehicles, there appeared to be an underage kid. With all the human trafficking going on in the area, Cash Valley Transparency attempted to get a video shot of the individual in the car, so that if it did turn out later that that individual was either missing or being trafficked, we would have video evidence that he was in the front seat of that deputy's car. Cash Valley says that Sergeant Olson told him to get away from the car or he'd be arrested for interference, for trying trying to record the individual in the passenger seat. Cash Valley claims that as he walked away from the vehicle to avoid arrest, Sergeant Olson was already too triggered to let it go and ran up behind him, grabbed his arm, and placed him under arrest. Sergeant Olson then stole the cell phone with the recording of what happened. The cell phone wasn't stolen to be used as evidence. After all, Sergeant Olson had his own body camera on and that video could have been used if they really wanted to charge this guy with a crime. The cell phone was only stolen to prevent the newsworthy incident from being published. For standing on a public easement recording police activity, Cache County Sheriff arrested someone and charged them with interfering with an arrest as well as resisting arrest. Of course, we don't have actual video of the incident, and that's just the way the Sheriff's Department likes it. How are we supposed to say what did or didn't happen when there's no video? But Cache Valley had every intention of uploading that video. The only reason it's not uploaded is because the Sheriff's Department stole the footage and refuses to release their own footage of the incident. This is a perfect black and white example of how governments use force and violence to control media narratives. We expect this from North Korea. We expect it from China. But did you know that this happens every day in the US? The following audio clip is a phone conversation between myself and Sergeant Openshaw with the Cache County Sheriff's Department. While I know the audience will understand what I'm doing here, I have to articulate for the YouTube bots that I do not support the initiation of violence against peaceful people ever for any reason. But I definitely got Sergeant Openshaw to laugh about me talking about hurting innocent people. I, I, I've seen this guy on YouTube recently in the area and Kind of, yeah, yeah. What uh, What do you guys know about that guy? Just, I mean, it seems uh, like he's just bit. trashing cops. What's he's, going on with that? So he's what they call like a First Amendment auditor. So he likes to go out and videotape cops and make sure we're not violating people's civil rights, which, which is fine. He, you know, they're allowed to videotape as long as they're not interfering with what we're trying to do. Okay. So See, It seems um, kind of annoying, that's all. I, I guess it's legal, it's though. Definitely annoying. It's legal. It's legal, but it's definitely it's, and it's definitely annoying. It it becomes a problem, like I said, if he's getting into our crime scene or interfering in some way. Then um, he he actually did that the other day and interfered and uh, walked into our scene, and so he got himself arrested. <laughs> what did he What did he do to interfere? So, was he it happens? Was he messing with? evidence on your scene or something again or i'm like man what if i'm on a ride along with these guys and this asshole i mean sorry and this this guy <laughs> is recording me too like can he record me too if i'm out there with you guys yeah yeah i mean it's like that's not interference you could, he could stand on a he could stand on a street corner and videotape anybody he wanted to because he's out in the public and there's no expectation of privacy when you're out in the public so you can't so, just yeah you, you can't just call it interference and arrest him for me if he's recording me if i'm out with you guys <laughs> No, nope. At what point does he cross that line then? I mean, where? I mean, I I thought that just being there, you know, would constitute interference because it's annoying. So, at what point yeah. does it cross the line from you know legal to interference? Yeah. So, unfortunately, just being annoying isn't uh, going to constitute interfering. Um, interfering would be more if uh, uh, if you know, like if he. Uh, oh, what's a good example? Um, so like if I'm trying to affect an arrest and he's yelling and hollering, or maybe he's coming up and getting really close where I don't feel safe anymore, that's going to be interfering. Um, if he's, if I say, Hey, you need to stay on this side of the street, you can't come over to this area and he does it anyway, that's going to be interfering. So those kinds of things where he's failing to comply with a police officer's command to do something or, um, or you know he's 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 violating that that safe distance, or 
just something where, you know, and, and he comes up and he's getting too close. And I say, hey, man, you need to stay back. And he's like, F you, I can do whatever. I'm going to come up here and get as close as I want. He moves even closer. That's going to be a problem. All right. Well, I guess if it, that makes sense. So he's got to be he's got to be actively doing something to interfere, not just standing down on the street corner videotaping. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, fair enough. It, it would be it nice does. if it was different, but yeah, that's it's, that's how it is. It, it, it would it be does. nice if it was different, but yeah, that's that's how it is i mean i suppose it, it does i mean this in it, good in our favor it does sound like it's somewhat arbitrary and all we have to do is say hey man i want you to go over there and if he doesn't you know then we get to arrest him right yeah it has to be reasonable too but okay where do where do those uh reasonable anyway, standards yeah. come from is it is it in legislation or is it kind of just whatever the officer feels like yeah just whatever just whatever would be reasonable to most people really and stuff that I can articulate as far as like our safety and things like that. Yeah. And it's a lot easier to do stuff when you've got all the citizens backing you too. Yeah. So yeah. That's definitely nice. That's, that's why I'm saying just tase him, dude. I don't think that, you know, I mean, in your, <laughs> let, let's think about it in your area. Say you tase the guy in the back for no reason at all. It's going to go to a jury, right? Uh, what kind of jury in your area is going to say that cop did wrong, right? <laughs> Oh, they, you never know nowadays. You see, there's been some crazy stuff going on in courts and juries and stuff, so I don't know. Well, I'll, I'll try it. I'll go on a ride along, I'll kick him in the dick, and we'll see if a jury thinks I did wrong. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, so it's, 